two, team keep it clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another episode of Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask any question and we answer it in a video like this. You wanna be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you ain't even gotta do all that. You can go send me a DM on Patreon. You wanna become a Team Keep It Clean patron? You don't have to, but if you want to, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got... <laughs> Oh we, oh, we got a lot of great questions like we always do. But this week, oh, these questions, sensational. Shout out to Future. Team Keep It Clean, let's get it. And let's start off with a lovely patron in this episode. Shout out to my guy, Oscar. He said, ain't Graven, what's going on? So hit me out. After last night's loss against the Packers, I just got to get something off my chest. Why are so many people on Giro for last night's decision to go for two? In my eyes, that call is on Hobbs and Hobbs only. Oh, for sure. It definitely is. Um, and before we continue with the rest of your question, that's Harbaugh all day. That's not on Giro. Now, why people are mad at Giro is the, 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 the type of play call that it was. It was a terrible call. If you're going to go for two, which I didn't really like, but okay, if you're going to go for two, you got to have something better than that. I would have much rather, or I wouldn't, I would have much rather the Ravens went to overtime or kick the point after touchdown. But if you're going to fail, at least the, the, fail, the failure needs to look a lot prettier than that. That you, 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 you only gave Tyler Huntley one option and one option only. He didn't have the option to run. He didn't have the option to throw to other people. It was Mark Andrews and Mark Andrews only. That's why people are getting on Giro. But the decision, yes, that is all on Hobbs to actually go for it. He said it started with going for it on fourth down, not once but twice in the, on the first drive. If we kick that field goal, we might win the game. Now, yeah, we, we might have. Um, but, I mean, we could have still won the game without even kicking that field goal. But now, now that going for it on fourth... I, and I said it during the stream. I would have taken a field goal. It would have been hard, but I would have taken a field goal. Uh, because you know, like, all right, we settled for a field goal, but we know we can move the ball on this Packers defense. We know it. And they show literally all game they can move the ball on that Packers defense. Uh, but anyway, he said, this is only Huntley's second start ever, and Harvest needs to put him in the best position to succeed. He failed to do so last night. What advantage does it give us to be up by one in that position? It's not just anyone you were giving the ball to with 40 seconds left and a timeout. It's Aaron Rodgers. He's done that about 70 times in his career, and they needed a field goal to win. I'm convinced he would have gotten it done. So why go for two? In my opinion, that was nonsensical. I love you. Uh, th th this decision is on Hobbs, not Giro. And Hollywood was wide open on the play as well, so the play call could have worked. The decision to go for two against the Steelers. I could understand, as we had no corners left. But last night's decision in my eyes was inexcusable and Hobbs needs to be held accountable for it. Sorry this was so long. Hope you and the fam are good. Thanks for all you do for Team Keep It Clean. No, thank you for all you do for Team Keep It Clean, especially enlightening us with this question from subscriber for the first question to start us off for the first question from subscribers of this week. And yes, that again, that, that the decision is all on Hobbs. Giro and company, they got to come up with a much better play call than that. Um, but to even go for it in the first place. And yeah. Even if they would have got it. Um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers still got time. So Ravens defense could have stopped them. And they could not have stopped them. But even the two-point conversion, it doesn't doesn't like end the game. because uh, it's 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 a lot of time left. <laughs> but hey, that's that's the Ravens right now, man. They uh they they've been getting by with some bad decisions, uh some bad play call. They've been getting by with it. And it's like it's what what was so frustrating is that the very beginning of the game, they were calling a great game on offense. But then on that fourth down, they called a, a QB draw on that first drive. On the second fourth down that they got on a, or that they went for on the first drive. They called a QB draw. So you take away all the Tyler Huntley's options. You take everybody on the field is just what what are they even there for? Besides the offensive line on the QB draw. So they took away all of his options. Terrible play call. You have been doing so great. Then you call that terrible play call. And then even throughout the rest of the game, offense have been doing great. And then that's how you want to end it with that terrible play? Like, come on now. Next question also came from a patron. Appreciate you up, South Q. He said, Angry, hey, now that the Vikings released Bashar Breeland and we need major help in the secondary, do you think we should go get him? And if so, would he be a great fit with the Ravens? Man, I don't know much about him. I know he played for the Chiefs. Uh, I think he played for Washington in a little while ago, too. But he recently got cut from the Vikings for he was getting into it with coaching staff. Uh, he was <laughs> so. If he got into it with the coaching staff there, oh, if he come over, he definitely get into a coaching staff here. But I actually do think the Ravens are going to take a look at him. I, I really do. 
Um, he uh, he has to pass through waivers though. He has to clear waivers, um, and he got cut I think on Saturday. So he um yeah he has to pass through waivers. So we'll know if he clears by waivers by today Monday. Monday is when I'm recording this. You won't see this video on Monday, but we'll know if he clears by waivers by the time you see this video. And yeah, that he could definitely be an option for the Ravens. I don't even I don't care if he's a zone corner. I don't care if he's a man corner. I don't care. Ravens need help in the secondary. I feel like they should be all over that. All over that. Just just don't let him in the same room with the coaching staff because he's he going he to be upset. <laughs> but I, why not? Like, why, why not? Like, this season, you, ooh, and with this depleted secondary, you getting ready to go up against Jamar Chase and, 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 uh, and and T Higgins and, and, and Tyler Boyd. Oh well, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't hurt at all. My, it, it couldn't hurt. What's the think? Of, what's the worst that it, that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Next question came from Dominique. He said, "Engraving, I just had a quick thought on and needed to get it off my mind. With the season winding down, and believe it or not, we may have to fight for a playoff spot in the last game of the year against Steelers. Uh, to me, I think Lamar will be back to the Rams game or for the Rams game to be sure. But if you are the coach." Do you keep resting Lamar and let Huntley work out, or do you insert Lamar even if Huntley is doing well? My coworker was reaching when he said uh, this could be another Bledsoe Brady situation, and I said no way. But what's the opinion on that? It's, it's not. It's not another one of those situations. Um, it, it if Lamar's healthy, Lamar's your guy, straight up. If Lamar's healthy, Lamar's your guy. We absolutely love what Tyler Huntley is doing, and if Lamar is not healthy, then Tyler Huntley is the guy. But when Lamar is healthy, he's the guy. That's it. And we know he hadn't been playing. Uh, he hadn't been playing well to for this little stretch. Um, but the only way to get somebody out of that slump is by him playing. And that's and even without the whole slump talk, that's your guy. You like if if, if after everything that he's done, even recently, if I well, I know the. I can't, I can't even say I know the Ravens wouldn't do that because anything is possible till it ain't possible no more. But the Ravens better not play with fire like that. They better not. Oh, oh, they, oh, they better not. Because mm. I just, I, I, I feel like I'm so sure that the Ravens wouldn't do that. That they wouldn't be like, oh, no, Lamar, you, you stay on the bench even if you're healthy. I feel like they wouldn't do that. But at the same time, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's something. I don't know. Um, so we just got to see how the thing plays out. But it, it just it, it shouldn't be. It's Lamar's team. It's Lamar's team. Tyler Huntley's filling in and he's doing a nice job filling in. Uh, but it's still Lamar's team. Uh, his next question was, uh, this is a tough loss after this Packers game. But after assessing the game, my first question is, what did you think of this 13 combination of the offensive line this week? Uh, me personally, I think they did better than usually, especially having a second string guard in and a third string right tackle in. Huntley only got sacked one time, but he also was getting the ball out on time when needed. Um, uh, yeah, they, they did good. Sharp, he came in and did really well. And Ben Cleveland, um, for Latavius Murray to be breaking through the offensive line like that, because there had been holes before, and Latavius Murray, he would see them and try, but he just wouldn't quite make it. But today, he saw them and tried, and he, he was getting it. So I'm like, oh, you, you got to leave Ben Cleveland there. So that's it. And, and David Sharp, you got to leave him there, too. With Pat McCarry, that's, that's going to be tricky. It's, I, and I know it's only been one game for David Sharp and whatnot, but it's only been one game for David Sharp. He looked good. Uh, so, hey, I, I don't know, man. But he said, uh, my second question is, do you think the Packers uh, not blitzing as much made the offensive line look better? Or did they actually play better as a whole? Or was it Huntley getting the ball out of his hand? It was a mix of a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Offensive line was doing their thing, but Huntley, he, him getting the ball out quicker, that helps the offensive line a lot. Uh, and he also said, I just got finished watching this Packers game, and I can say for a depleted team all around, we didn't play as bad as I thought we would. Snoop came in and held his own, being the first Raven to have two pass touchdowns and two rush touchdowns in the same game. Oh, Lamar, you never done that before? I'm surprised, but that's nice. After Huntley start, what would your greatest performance in this game? Oh, a super A+. Plus. How the hell he did a great job. He did a great job. Phenomenal job. Um, and to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aaron Rodgers, 
and you are a guy your second year undrafted rookie free agent in your second year your backup quarterback you go like that with Aaron Rodgers oh yeah you you something serious next question came from my boy Nicholas he said yo engraving hope you and the fam are doing well I'm typing this during the Packers game it's just ha it's just before halftime and I'm starting to think a little bit with Snoop starting and some in the Ravens subreddit shout out to uh, Reddit or uh, subreddit slash Ravens saying that we may have a Q QB controversy brewing. Oh boy, here we go. Does this seem like 2019 Ravens to you? Hit me out. Dynamic QB with unknown potential slash play, but amazing physical gifts. Uh, quicker passing game with less complicated reads. Pretty good tag team of QB uh, and our running back runs. And just in general, unknown play styles and play calls. I am on the G Row needs to go train, and the Packers do not have a top defense. But if Lamar ends up out, for the next couple of weeks and Snoop, the unknown, ends up starting. Do you believe the offense will start to look like 2019, even for a brief moment? Love to hear your thoughts. So keep up the great work. And as always, shout out the team. Keep it clean. I appreciate you, Nick. Um, I would hope so. I mean, that, like, who, for them to put up uh, 30 points, was it 30 points in the game? Yeah, for them to put up 30 points, like, hey, let's go. 30 points. Ravens offense, like, that don't even sound right from how that Ravens offense has been recently. But 30 points, like, oh, okay. I'm happy with that all day. Um, QB controversy, though, no. Uh, but the offense, a lot of unknowns. Uh, but good unknowns. Uh, yeah. The Ra I mean, Ravens fans know about Tyler Huntley. But a lot of other NFL fans don't, which is understandable because they don't sit there watching every single Ravens game and Ravens play, and they, they don't know. They know only so much about their starting quarterback, but about the backup quarterback, don't nobody know about Tyler Honey like that. But he showed the world yesterday that he can ball. So if he does still continue to start, if Lamar still hurts, then, yeah, hopefully he continues to ball. Next question came from my guy John. He said, Ain't Graven been a fan of the Ravens my whole life, but only recently got into football when Lamar set the nation on fire. Discovered your channel a little over a year ago, and I overall enjoy and agree with your takes on the Ravens. Love what you're doing, and I hope you keep it up. Appreciate that, man. Uh, number one, do you think the Ravens should hire Jordan Palmer for Lamar to train with this offseason? I've been seeing a lot of people saying that. Um, he said he has done great work for the likes of Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, and I think Lamar would really benefit from it. Yeah, it couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Um... And with Lamar, um, I think for him, he he just got to get settled, man. Because Lamar, like, he's already shown that he could pass. And when he's set and when he, even sometimes when he's not set, um, he, he could do his thing through the air as a passer, too. Uh, but in his recent play, he just he just been looking rattled, man. And, again, I think it's just been that, that, that long toll, the season taking a toll on him, like this season for sure. Losing literally everybody and being hit time after time after time after time after time. Um, and just really having to feel like you got to do everything for the team. I think it's just, it's just led to a lot of uh, poor fundamental stuff. So we, we've seen the fundamentals be there for Lamar, but he just got to get back to it. So, I mean, he could work with Jordan Palmer in the offseason. Cool, great. But he, he just got to get back to fundamentals. That's the biggest thing that I think it is for him. And he said to Sean Elliott, I love him, but I feel he is more a strong safety than a true free safety. Oh, that's definitely true. Uh, so I had an idea. Why not move him to linebacker? Hit me out. He is underweight. Uh, the man hits like a truck. Or, or need I remind everyone of the time he laid out Derrick Henry. He also has the ability to put on weight, uh, similar to how Darren Waller did when he shifted to tight end. This could give the Ravens the option to see how Brandon Stevens progresses, as well as give Ardarius Washington a chance. Oh, Brandon Stevens is there. I, Deshaun Elliott, I, he's not going to take Brandon Stevens' spot. He's not. They're, even if the Ravens do re-sign him, which there's a, there's a chance that they could, there's obviously a chance that they won't. But it's Brandon Stevens now. That's their guy now. Um, the only way that Brandon Stevens would be moved out of that position is if <laughs> he, he probably won't be. He probably won't be. They, they, I think they're going to roll with him. Um, and I don't think Deshaun Elliott would change that because Ravens, they're not going to trust Deshaun Elliott to be their starter moving forward, even if they do resign him. They're not going to trust him to be the starter. So uh, that's why I almost think that they won't resign him because of that, um, because he's going to want an opportunity to start somewhere. And I think he'll test the market, see what's out there. Um, and depending on how the market reacts to Deshaun Elliott, then I think he could be back as a, a sort of role guy. Or, hey, if, even if they put him at linebacker, that'd be something. Because he got some speed. And, yeah, he ain't afraid to hit nobody. Um, so, yeah. And, he, and, I mean, yeah, he is a, more of a box safety. But um, I, I don't think the Ravens will trust him to be a starter as safety for them 
because of the injury history. Even though it's been three different injuries, I don't think they would put him back there as their guy for that. Uh, I think, yeah, that's going to be Brandon Stevens. Unless some crazy free agent who is just a beast ends up available and Ravens actually would sign him. But I just, uh, it's going to be Brandon Stevens from here. Uh, and he also said, um, who do you want for the new head coach? I personally would like Brian uh, Depo, <laughs> the Bills offensive coordinator, or another young offensive-minded coach, somebody similar to Sean McVay. Mm. So if the Ravens got a uh, a new head coach, who would I want it to be? Um, mm. That's a really good question. Uh, um, man, that is a really good question. <sighs> wow. Mm. Maybe Eric B. Enemy. Somebody who is worked with. Um, he's somebody that could be more. He could be relatable to the players. With John Harbaugh, he, he, the, the players like John Harbaugh, so that's good. But Eric B. Enemy, he could be. I think he could be even more relatable to the players. Um, and he's a. And off, he's obviously offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. Um, but we know Andy Reid does a lot of the play calling. But Eric Bieniemy, he helps with a lot of the designing of that stuff. Um, and they find ways to get different guys involved. Um, so if you have an offensive-minded head coach, you could also have uh, that's you, you have you double dipping. Like if you get a, whoever you get an offensive coordinator. It's like even more of like it's like combining powers, like superpowers on offense. Like, all right, I'm an offensive minded head coach. Oh, I'm a good offensive coordinator. Let's combine our powers and boom, oh, Captain Planet, something like that. But it would just um, and even if they kept like Kiki and TT, if they kept them like just just and just thinking of scenarios and stuff. But if they kept them too, like oh man, yeah, and maybe one of them. I don't know, man. But I'm sure if, if Eric Bieniemy, if he became a head coach, he would bring his own staff. Wink would be gone. Cause Wink said that he he as long as Harbaugh's staying, he's staying. But if Harbaugh was to get kicked out, then I think Wink would be gone too. Uh Greg Roman would be gone too. Um But yeah, James Urban, he'd be gone too, probably. Um But yeah, he'd probably bring on his own whole new staff. Uh so Eric Bieniemy, they ball, I mean, he could be one too. Bill's offensive coordinator. Cause they they do a good job of getting a lot of people involved, too. Um, they got a nice little group of receivers. We got a nice group of receivers, too, though. So they got Stephon Diggs. They got Gabe Davis, uh, Cole Beasley. Um, the tight end, uh, man, I forget his name. Cause he, he had been going off, too. I know he broke his hand, and then he had been out for a little while. I don't know what the situation is now. But I know that was a long time ago. But anyway, um, so, yeah, that would be another one. Um, mm, who else? I would really have to think about that because a lot of times we get hit with this question, oh, oh who would you want as a new offensive coordinator? But as far as a new head coach, if, if Ravens got a new head coach, man. Mm. And, oh, you got a Byron Leftwich, too. That's another option, too. I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't really want a defensive-minded guy. Reason being is because we have Lamar Jackson. We have a Hollywood Brown. We have Rashad Bateman. We have a Mark Andrews. We have J.K. Dobbins. We have Gus Edwards. And not saying a defensive-minded coach couldn't do it, but I would want somebody who specializes in offense, an offensive guy. Because, again, you, you, that is what the focus of your team is. Of course, you still got to play defense, too. But the focus on, of your team is Lamar Jackson. He's getting ready to get paid a lot of money. And he is your guy. So with him being your guy, you want to get the most out of him. You want to really just maximize him. And whoever can maximize Lamar Jackson, that's who I want. This question came from my boy Ricky B. He said, uh, we haven't heard much talk about Miles Boykin either as a blocker or a receiver. Is there any chance that we move Boykin to tight end to be Waller 2.0? Could you imagine him being opposite of Andrews as a big guy with speed? He would be a mismatch. Mm, that would be something right there. But with Boykin, um, I haven't seen him on offense at all anymore. I remember when he first...
came back from the hamstring injury. There was one play where he was on offense for like a couple plays, and he would be out there a little bit, but recently, not out there at all. Even with Sammy Watkins being out in the game yesterday against the Packers, I didn't see him not one time. Uh, I did see him on special teams, though, so that was cool, but um, it could just be timing because uh, he did. This is his first game back, I believe. Uh, but I don't. They're not. I don't think they're gonna do the the whole Darren Wallace. I don't think they're gonna move him to tight end at all. I think that is a uh, a pipe dream for us Ravens fans. I wouldn't mind if they did, but I don't think they're gonna do it. They've shot it down multiple times. Um, not to say they can't change their mind, but I just I don't think they're gonna do it. And I actually do think that um, it's possible that he might be traded this off season. And I actually think that would be good for him. Fresh start somewhere else, uh, new opportunities, new chance to just prove yourself, to reinvent yourself, to be in a whole new building, new players, new coaching staff, new everything. Um, and hopefully wherever he would be traded to, they really take advantage of his skill set um, and just really give him an opportunity. So that's that. I think that's more likely to happen than the Ravens moving him to tight end. Because last next year is the last year of his deal, I believe. Because he got drafted in 2019. So 19, 20, 21, uh, and 22. So, yeah. Next year. Next season will be the last year of his deal. Um, so, yeah. I think that the trade scenario is more likely to happen than the tight end scenario. And the last questions on this episode came from Nova. He said, I ain't Ravens Nova with two more questions. And I'm sending this as the Ravens have failed this fourth down. I mean, failed this fourth uh, and two versus the Packers. Shaking my head. Number one, so if we fail to beat the Bengals this week, how would you feel if they decide to let Lamar sit the remainder of the season? Mind you, this is different from me saying tank the season or bench Lamar for Huntley due to performance. Wait for impromptu response. <laughs> uh, um, I'll say no. The only way you bench him is if he's not healthy. That's it. That's the only way you bench him. Uh, if you lose to the Bengals, I mean, yeah, if we lose to the Bengals, I like how you said, fail to beat the Bengals. That's a different way of saying losing. That's a creative way of saying losing. But if we fail to beat the Bengals this week, how would you feel they decide to let them sit the rest of the year? No, because I feel like that wouldn't necessarily be tanking because Tyler, he's shown that he could, he could play. We know Tyler Huntley could play. Um, but what kind of message would that send to Lamar? If you bench Lamar for the rest of the season, even if you lose to the Bengals, you're telling him, uh, Lamar, you're done here. You're, you're done here. We're shutting you down. And what if he's healthy? If he's, health, if he's not healthy, that's one thing. But if he's healthy, he, oh, Lamar, no, no, no. You, you can sit. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't think that would end so sweet. Uh, but anyway, he says, so before you agree or disagree, hear me out. For one, Lamar hasn't looked right since the Chiefs game this year. Extra rest can't hurt. Number two, this gives Lamar and the Ravens time to ensure Lamar is going to be 110% for this contract he's going to sign. Three, this lets Huntley showcase his skills so other teams can see him. He won't stay in Baltimore as just a backup, just based off of his skill set. For this, uh, oh, four, this plays into EDC and his mantra that every dollar counts. So he would let a player like Snoop leave to start elsewhere in exchange for, for more picks. These are my opinions, of course, but I'd be interested to hear in yours. Yeah, uh, that's... That's all true, but again, what, what's the message that you're sending Lamar? Yeah, extra rest can't hurt. That, that's true, but what, what, what message are you sending your franchise quarterback who has done so much for your franchise? The only reason that your head coach is still the, the only reason you still have the head coach that you do is because of Lamar Jackson. And that says a lot. That says a whole lot. So would you be willing to be, hey, even if you're healthy, you know what? Sit it out. Sit it out. We'll just, we just get back to it next year. You, ooh, play with fire like that if you want to. He said, number two, I know in the offseason the talk was Lamar has been figured out, and I'd be the first to say that's false, but would it be far-fetched to say that Baltimore has been figured out? While Lamar and Snoop cause nightmares for a defensive coordinator, some things have remained the same with, without Lamar, such as slow starts, aggressive and unnecessary play calls, and bringing pressure when that personnel you have isn't built to cover that long. Last point has seen improvement, though. Do you believe there's a key to beating Baltimore as a whole? And can these changes be made without changing the coordinators and or head coach? No. Um, sorry for the novels. This question, as usual, thank you for what you do for us as the fans. And I hope you and yours are well. Appreciate it. Um, no, no serious change is going to come until there's a changing of the, the coaches and the coordinators. None. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same thing. 
And I feel like they can like string us along and we oh we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But and we hope, we always hope that they do better. But if the key to beating the Ravens, all you gotta do is make it a close game. That's it. Make it a close game. Make it a game to where you're up. By where you're up by a touchdown. With one minute to go, and the Ravens have the ball. That's all you gotta do. And yeah, even if the Ravens drive the ball down the field, get a touchdown on you, all you all you gotta do is on a two-point conversion, send, send a, all 11 people to cover Mark Andrews, and they'll still throw to him. They'll still design a play to where it's Mark Andrews or nothing. That's how you can beat the Ravens. That's it. Simple as that. So, um, but now, as far as uh, them being figured out, um, no, I, I wouldn't say that all the way. But, I mean, with Greg Roman, with the offense, uh, we know what they bring. We know what they can do. And, I mean, if they would have been figured out, I think, like, like the game yesterday against the Packers, they wouldn't have put up no 30 points. If you figure it out, you don't put up no 30 points. No. So, they can still make some changes, do some things differently. Again, with the offensive line and Tyler Huntley, they helped each other out a lot in the game. Him getting the ball out quick, them actually blocking for a decent amount of time. And his, his legs, too, helped a lot because he had to move out sometimes, roll out, scramble out of that pocket. Um, but, as and, and yeah, you're right, the, the defensive coordinator, Wink, as far as bringing pressure and dropping back, uh, he has improved on that a lot over uh, the past, like, couple of, like, maybe, like, the past month and changed. He's definitely uh, improved a lot. Um, but... The the biggest changes won't come until you see the biggest changes made. Like the Ravens, like the Ravens, and you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.